Hello friends, this video on resources and development part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now when we see this lesson, we are always talking about resource, resource, resource planning, resource development. Now the biggest question is why at all is resource planning needed? Why do we even need this? Now there are several problems that could arise due to random use of resources. Now if we start using resources like this, like you know we are wasting resources, you are, we are just using it randomly. So in that case we will come across some very serious problems like resource depletion. The resources are limited and if we use them judiciously only then we will be able to leave them for our future generations. Right? Because today we are enjoying all the resources. But if we use all of it, because they are limited as I said, right? So if we use all of them, so what will our future generations do? They will not have anything for them, right? So it is important that we use resources judiciously and that is where resource planning plays a critical role. Then the next is rich and poor division. Now what happens is due to unequal distribution of resources like those who have money they are able to buy a lot of resources for example let, let's talk about uh, any resource let's say water so today we have water available all around us so we do not really have scarcity of water everywhere at least for now but as time passes by if we continue to waste water like this what will happen there will be very limited stock of water and that time it will be something like this that those who have money they will be able to buy water because then water will no more be free because you have limited stock so it is a paid uh, resource so those who have money will be able to get it those who do not have money will not be able to afford it now as a result what happens now when there is unequal distribution of resources there are some people who are utilizing too much of resource there whereas there are some other people who are not getting them at all so as a result what happens the society gets divided into two sections rich and poor so that is another disadvantage and the moment you have this rich poor division in the society a lot of other problems follow next global warming so what do we mean by global warming now an overall increase in the temperature of the earth is what we call as global warming that means globally the temperature rises and therefore it is like warm globally and why does that happen? That happens when there is too much of carbon dioxide getting accumulated in the atmosphere for a very long time. And what does this carbon dioxide do? So this carbon dioxide has heat trapping effect. As a result, it traps all the heat and increases the overall temperature of the earth. Now the next question is how is resource related here? Because global warming is happening because of accumulation of carbon dioxide. And why is carbon dioxide getting accumulated? Because carbon dioxide comes from burning of fossil fuels. And what are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are your resources. So you see if you use your resources randomly or you if you use them excessively what happens it has a negative impact on the environment it causes things like global warming. Not only that another problem that could arise is ozone layer depletion what's that now ozone layer is a protective layer. So this layer protects us from the harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun because this harmful ultraviolet radiation can cause various skin diseases in human beings. So this ozone layer protects us from those harmful radiations. But because of like you know uh, excessive or indiscriminate use of resources this ozone layer is gradually depleting. Why? Because there are many chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons so they are one of the major causes of ozone layer depletion so these kind of chemicals are released into the atmosphere and they break down the ozone which is present in the ozone layer and therefore ozone layer depletion happens and we are exposed to all the harmful radiations of the sun 
correct and why do we have these chemicals in the atmosphere because of so many industries that have been set up and why do we have those industries again to utilize more and more resources so when you actually try to overuse the resources like when you try to use them more than what you need so there comes the negative impacts not only that pollution is one another very bad impact of random use of resources now excessive use of resources can cause pollution for example burning of fossil fuels can give rise to harmful gases in the atmosphere like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide so they can pollute the air resulting in air pollution similarly dumping of industrial wastes or insecticides fertilizers pesticides using too much of all these for you know growing more and more crops so all these harmful chemicals will when they go get into the water bodies they pollute water resulting in water pollution so in this fashion due to excessive use of chemicals and fertilizers just to utilize resources at its best we end up polluting the air water and soil so therefore it is very important that we use resources judiciously so that we do not end up with any of these problems however a lot of these problems have already started taking place for example pollution is already there especially in big cities there is a lot of pollution ozone layer depletion has also started global warming is there right resource depletion has also started there are a lot of areas where there where we have started facing the scarcity of many resources right so it has already started and it is high time that we look into resource planning now when we talk about resource planning in so much detail we sometimes feel that if we do not use these resources then how will development happen because for development we need technology we need more industries more manufacturing we need more development in all sense right so for that we will have to make use of the resources which are present in the nature so we are not trying to say that we are against development we want development to happen but development should not happen at the cost of environment so that means development should take place in such a way that it should not damage the environment and this type of development is called sustainable development that means a development that can sustain because if your development is taking place by causing harm to the environment in that case that development will not sustain because with passage of time you might think that you are developing but your environment is degrading as a result you are also degrading so that development will not sustain so for a development to sustain it must ensure that the development is happening without damaging the environment and this type of development is called sustainable development so by now we understood that we always need to go for sustainable development and for that resource planning is necessary why resource planning is needed that is also clear so now let us see how exactly do we do resource planning right now india is a country with great diversity even in terms of resources now there are specific areas which are rich in specific resources right so it is very important that we utilize all of these resources very very well so the first step would be so our resource planning strategy which has four steps the first step is resource identification across various regions now as i said if you look at the map of india you would see that there are different regions there are different states which are rich, rich in different resources for example if you talk about states like jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh so these are three states which are very rich source of coal and minerals right so these are rich source of let me write it down here so the they are have rich they are rich source of coal and minerals on the other hand if you look at states like rajasthan and gujarat they are great they have great reservoir of wind and solar energy again if you look at 
a state like arunachal pradesh so it has very good water resources now if you go up and you go to ladakh so there you would see that they do not have water in ladakh you do not have water at all i mean very less water they do not have infrastructure but they have very rich cultural heritage again if you come back to the coastal areas you would see that they are great source of tidal energy so what i mean to say is there are different regions which are rich source of specific resources and there are certain regions which lack certain resources right for example if you look at states like rajasthan and gujarat even though they have good wind energy and solar energy but they do not have vegetation at all in rajasthan you do not have lot of cultivation happening similarly if you look at arunachal pradesh they have good water resources but they do not have infrastructure at all right so first of all we have to identify resource across various regions we need to know that which regions are good source for which resources and which regions lack which resources so that that is going to be our first step then the next step will be planning structure to implement resource development plans now now that we know which place has is rich in what and which place lacks what now what we should do we should plan a strategy that how exactly are we going to implement the resource development plans so that that is going to be our next step the third step would be match resource development plans with overall nation development this is very very important now it should not happen that coal mining in jharkhand get so aggressive so i mean since jharkhand has rich coal deposits that doesn't mean that we start coal mining so aggressively in jharkhand that it spoils the land in jharkhand that it pollutes the environment in jharkhand and it brings up new problems in jharkhand now when so many new problems arise in jharkhand then what happens it has an impact on the overall nation right so it is important that whenever we plan resource development plans for specific regions they should be in sync with the overall nation development that is very important and finally step 4 is resource conservation is important now a lot of time we ignore this but this is one of the most critical things now conservation is must for development because resource planning alone will not help because on one side we may be planning that how to use the resources how to you know improve the infrastructure in arunachal pradesh and how to utilize water resources from arunachal pradesh we might be doing all those plans and implementing them but if we are not conserving water then there is no point because on one side we are doing resource planning on the other side we are wasting resources so then there is no benefit so it is very important that on one hand we have to do resource planning on the other hand we have to conserve the resources that means we have to stop wastage of resources we have to use resources judiciously and wisely now as was uh, told by mahatma gandhi that one should always support production by the masses and in fact he himself was against mass production because he believed that when there is mass production taking place then what happens there is always a wastage involved now i will give you a very small example right let us say that your mother prepared some sweets for you okay, during diwali now she prepared maybe 5 kg of sweets now when you have so many sweets at your home then what happens you start wasting it because you feel that there are so many right so you will eat one or two you you sometimes will even uh, not sometimes when you don't feel like eating you will eat half of it and you will throw the rest of it why because you know that you have a good stock of the sweets in your house right why because there was a mass production your mother prepared too many sweets together now instead of that if it happens in such a way that your mother tells that all of us all the family members will together prepare the sweets now instead of preparing so many sweets all alone you your mother your father your sister all of you together sit 
all of you are putting in your, your effort, all of you are putting in your time to prepare sweets and this time you are not making 5 kg of sweets, maybe you are making 2 kg of sweets but now this time time, effort and labor of all of you is involved. So now when you eat the sweet and if you don't feel like eating then you will not waste it, you will take half of it. Right? Why? Because now you know the importance or now you know that how much effort was put in while making the sweet. So, Gandhiji always supported production by the masses because when there is production by the masses, then the, the masses will think twice before wasting the resources. But when there is mass production, then people take it for granted because they are not putting in their effort to create the resources. So they do not think twice before wasting the resources also. Correct? So I hope you understood that how mass production is bad and how production by the masses is good. So this was about resource planning. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.